Hiya folks, how's it going? I hope every one of you are as well as can be expected. Just thought I'd take the opportunity to go out for a little ride this sunny August evening and uh, catch you up on what's been happening with me over the last few weeks and what's going to be happening over the next couple of weeks. I did talk uh, a few videos back, quite a few videos back now, about the, the change in my job. Essentially, for the last six months, I've been working for a new employer, but doing the same job that I've been doing for the last 25 years nearly. <laughs> um, but the last six months of that, pretty much, have been on temporary contracts. But now, as of the 1st of August, I have a permanent contract, permanently employed as an applications engineer for MassCamp CAD CAM software. Although, in my job, I will have to wear many hats, as I've been doing over the last 20 odd years. So I'm also an uh, instructor in the software as well. Anyway, permanent contract, woohoo! Now, in uh, just over a week from now, about a week and a half, I've got another track day lined up. This time, it'll be my uh, first visit to Alton Park. Can't wait to uh, put this bike through its paces through Alton. I know I'm gonna be absolutely hopeless to begin with, but, got to start somewhere so that'll be a nice uh, learning experience on my first visit to Alton. So as part of my preparations for the track day I thought I'd better check my uh, tyres and my brake pads because this bike's been taking a bit of abuse. <laughs> I think I've done three and a half track days which is three full track days and one evening session at Donington uh, on this bike. Uh, having said that only uh, two full track days I think on the front tyre but the brake pads are what came with the bike so um, they're the original brake pads so what's the damage on the front tyre it's done uh, just about 4,000 miles now and I'm nearly down to the wear bars in the middle of the tyre <laughs> 4,000 miles from the front now that's my own fault that's my own doing really of the track days and uh, hauling up this heavy beast on the brakes. So I'm sure under more normal use the front tyre would last a lot longer. So I think I need a new front tyre before the track day so I've got just over a week to sort that out and also the uh, front brake pads believe it or not they are pretty much toast as well. <laughs> so uh, 8,300 miles on the clock and I need new front brake pads. On each pair of brake pads on the calipers, it's the inside brake pad that's worn a bit more than the outside one. No idea why, but they're both close to the limit now, maybe about a mil before we reach the wear bars. In fact, to be fair, it's hard to see the wear bars and the manual says, well, you better be changing the pads. So, I've got to change the brake pads as well on the front. That one's uh, fine, still plenty of meat left on those. Another thing I think I want to do as well is change the oil. Now I'm basically halfway between services at this point in the bike's life, between the last one which was 6,000 miles I think, and the next one which is due in I think March next year. But with the track days I just feel that I'll be giving the engine a bit of a hard time and I don't think uh, an oil change will, will do any harm. So I spoke to my uh, local friendly BMW Motorrad motorcycle retailer, Cotswold Motorrad, and asked them for quotes for changing the oil and changing the brake pads. You know, it's Friday, I could, I could do with a laugh. <laughs> um, they come back, I think, with uh, £165 for oil and filter change on the bike. Yeah, that's not the brake pads as well. Brake pads are an additional £135. Uh, to fit them and supply them. So we're talking 300 quid for oil change, filter change and new brake pads. I know. Believe it or not, I'm thinking of actually going for it, um, getting the shop to do it so basically I don't have to. However, Cotswold Motra do owe me a bit of a discount because they kind of screwed up a service on my S1000R a couple of years ago and uh, in an email I got back from them they said they will continue to uh, give me discounts. 
on servicing and parts by way of an apology. Yes, I could do it myself, but it'd be a hassle. And I've not worked on these uh, radial calipers before, and I've not done all the change on the box there. I'm sure it won't be difficult. I've done both of these sorts of things before. But if I can get the shop to do it, get it in the service book, then why not? So hopefully they'll come back to me with a uh, revised price, which is much more palatable. Another point about the brakes, while you're still getting over the shock about the idea of me actually paying to get them replaced, <laughs> is that I really like the brakes as they are, and I don't want to risk switching to EBC pads or some aftermarket pads, so I do want the OEM pads. I don't want anything to change on the brakes. I'm really impressed. Partly because I think they're linked, but the way the bike slows down just belies the machine's weight, in my opinion. So um, I'm very impressed with this bike's stopping power, and I don't want to mess about with it. Talking of uh, motorbike shops, it's been a bit of an up and down uh, couple of months in regards to uh, the shops that I do my bike reviews with. So other than the beginning of the year, the, the three bikes I've been working with consist of the, the OGs, Fraser's of Gloucester. Ever grateful for uh, them giving me my, my first chance to review motorbikes that didn't belong to me. <laughs> awesome. The next one that came along was the Lind Motorrad. In Wellen Garden City, where I bought this bike from, and the S1000R before that. And, uh, and the third one was completely motorbikes in Gloucester, well not just Gloucester, lots of other places as well as you may uh, no doubt have noticed. Now uh, because of my change in uh, employment circumstances it's been hard to get time off work to uh, ride the demo bikes because these shops only want me to do that during the week not at the weekends because weekends are busy for them. Which I totally understand, I'm not a buyer just a bloke riding their demo bikes. Obviously they get uh, free publicity for this. A couple of times uh, this year I've emailed my, my usual contact at Completely Motorbikes, which is basically the main man, and um, asked if I could come over and ride some demo bikes. And unfortunately, um, out of those two emails that I sent, I've had no reply at all. Now, I don't want to become a nuisance because I've been, you know, trading on their uh, generosity, essentially. But I think they might have lost interest in me. So I'm not sure whether to do a third email. Um, the main man's a very busy man. I don't want to try and tie him up on a phone call. In fact, oh, I haven't talked to you about this yet. Uh, this Sunday, I'll be going to Silverstone for the MotoGP, which I'm really looking forward to. Just got a Sunday ticket. And I know completely motorbikes have got a stand there, so maybe if James is on the stand, I'll go and say hello. I thought, well, I'm down to uh, just two shops now, Lind and Fraser's. And uh, so I got back in touch with Lind, my contact there, Tom, the uh, sales manager over there. Asked if it's okay to come over <laughs> and uh, ride a bike or two. I got an auto-reply email back saying, as of about the week before my email, Tom had left the company. I was like, oh great, he was the only guy I spoke to at Lind um, in Welland Garden City with regards to riding these bikes. So then I, I phoned the shop up, asked to speak to a, a salesman and kind of uh, explained the situation, whether there's someone I could speak to with regards to maybe continuing the agreement of riding their demo bikes. I didn't hold out much hope. Uh, but the chap I spoke to gave me the name of Keith who is, uh, as I found out, the head of business at Lind. <laughs> so I thought, oh, my chance is even lower now. I'm speaking to, like, um, you know, senior management. I can't imagine I'll be interested in letting me ride their demo bikes. But anyway, I sent an email, explained the situation, gave them a link to my YouTube channel and a link to one of my videos. And also I thought I'd try and fight my corner a little bit by telling them how many views altogether the um, the BMW motorbike reviews have gathered and I was quite surprised to find that uh, overall I've got over 80,000 views 
of um, BMW bikes that I've uh, tested from Lim Motorrad. 80,000 views. I know in the grand scheme of things, for big vloggers and big channels, that isn't a lot. But me, by myself, doing all this stuff on the Todd, all the video editing and all that stuff. 80,000 views for a bunch of uh, review videos. <laughs> I'm really very chuffed. I think out of those BMW ones, possibly the, the biggest one with the S1000R 2021, the Mark III, or the third gen, I think that's got about 23,000 views. So anyway, yeah, so I said that in the email as well. Still not having much uh, confidence that <laughs> I get a good reply. But luckily, I did get a good reply. Keith come back and basically said, yeah, we're happy to continue the, uh, the arrangement. Oh, as part of the earlier email to him, or the first email to him, I did actually say that um, week commencing the 15th of August, which is week after next at this point, I've booked the week off work. And what I'd like to do is to come down one day, or maybe two days in that week, and uh, ride several motorcycles. In Keith's reply, he said, uh, I'm afraid we're short-staffed that week could you come down either the week before or the week after? Uh, well, the week before <laughs> that date is this week coming and I can't do it. Um, too busy. The uh, week after, well, I'm working all week at the moment, but I might be able to swing a day off. So I've just got to try and confirm that and get back to him. But the good news is, yes, he's happy for the situation to continue. Yes, it's a 200 mile round trip to get down to Lind <laughs> to ride their motorbikes. But it's worth it to me. Right, as part of my track day prep, I've uh, remounted a GoPro down here for the front wheel because I love that look. Sorry that the front brake caliper in this whole area is very dirty. But anyway, I'm clean the bike tomorrow before Silverstone. And I have a camera back here, my 360 camera, well, my third Insta360 ONE X after I destroyed the first and lost the second. <laughs> but unfortunately I've not quite tightened it enough because as it bounces up and down the road, it starts to drop, so I uh, need to rethink this mount I think, or just uh, tighten it, this up a bit more, hopefully nothing snaps. I think I've got a plan for that, we'll be okay. Don't know if you can see it, but yeah, there's the... Uh, wear bar I am right on the edge there so um, you know forget the track day I'm pretty much borderline illegal <laughs> so that's got to go it's a shame I've got so much tread on the side still but if it's gone in the middle it's gone in the middle what can you do that's uh, track days and heavy braking for you oh one thing <laughs> it's quite quiet out here isn't it one thing I've got to do is pass a noise test on the uh, on the track day for Alton Park is 102 decibel static and I'm really not sure whether the SP engineering exhaust is going to pass in its current state I really don't know so I've got no extra microphones on me to make it easy to record but I'm just going to hold it at 5000 rpm and just hear what it sounds like, see if it sounds, you know, really obnoxious. I don't reckon that's too bad, you know. <laughs> grow up oh I do have I do have my phone underneath my seat recording audio I think so hopefully that caught that oh yeah you may notice that the uh, the screens back on the bike as well <laughs> what I noticed on my last track day at Donington was oh Bedford Autodrome sorry when I was really on the tank well leaning forward and going down the back straight for instance my head was bobbing around a lot and I think what's happening is the wind is catching the, the top vent on the crash helmet and just pulling my head around now I could try and block that top vent 
it'll probably be a pretty ugly hack to do that. So what I'm hoping is a little sport screen there will deflect the wind over my crash helmet when I'm uh, under the bubble, so to speak, <laughs> on the track day. Otherwise, I've got no use to that screen. I find that it kind of makes um, traveling generally more noisy with that screen than it does without. Oh yeah, I've got a little bit of a nerdy camera talk. You saw my GoPro on the front and my Insta360 on the back. Now these are being powered by uh, an Ultima add-ons DIN to uh, two USB adapter plug jobby. It's just kind of behind my left, my right butt cheek. Uh, the thing is though, I've had a limited amount of success powering two cameras from um, two USB ports on the same device. The, the device, the plug, the adapter tends not to be able to supply enough either voltage or current, I don't know, <laughs> to uh, keep both cameras running. Because neither camera seems to be uh, clever enough to say, oh hold on, we're not getting the power we need from, from the external solution, let's switch to battery. No, they don't do that. If they uh, end up feeling low on power, they just stop recording and switch off. So hopefully, this um, Ultima add-ons plug will do the job of powering both cameras. Apparently, it supports 4.8 amps output over both sockets, which should be enough. Because I can't imagine the Insta360 at the back and the GoPro uh, Hero 6 at the front, you know, a few generations old now, I don't think they will pull that much uh, current between them. So fingers crossed, we'll be okay on that score. Oh, I love the farty goodness of this boxer engine. Fortunately, I haven't got a screwdriver on me. No, it's tight. The actual um, screw is tight. It's just not tight enough to deal with the bumps going up and down the road. So I'll leave it as it is. In fact, you know what? I'll make life easier for it. I'll just point it down, which means now I've pointed it down. It means it won't see past me so well, but at least it won't keep catching my eye as it keeps <laughs> dropping further and further. So I did say that um, I hope to go to Lind and ride some bikes. Um, that week I got off which we after my uh, track day on the Tuesday at Alton Park. They're not available, they're busy, that's fine. So I had to instigate plan B. What's plan B? So the plan is, uh, after Alton Park, which is on the Tuesday, I'm going to go east and get into the Peak District. I've never ridden a motorbike that far north. So this is my opportunity to explore um, the north of England. So Peak District, although that's not quite north, not yet, bear with me. So <laughs> Peak District on the Wednesday, and then somehow over Thursday, Friday and Saturday, keep going north. So my plan currently is to get to the Yorkshire Dales, and then uh, into the Pennines, and then hopefully breach um, the southern part of Scotland. I've certainly never had a motorbike in Scotland before. Probably spend uh, the day Saturday or the morning Saturday, uh, hopefully in the bottom end of Scotland somewhere, then start heading south again, hopefully off the main roads. One more hotel stay and then on Sunday travel the rest of the way back home in time for tea. Believe it or not, even though I've been riding for uh, 30 odd years now. In this country, I've never done a tour. Did the Barcelona trip for the MotoGP many, many years ago. But in this country, I've never done like a two or three night tour or trip. If anyone sees that sort of direction on a map, I'm probably be sticking to the middle of the country 
So yes, heading in that general direction, if any of you folks can uh, point out any nice spots for me to visit, to stop at, to chill out at, um, coffee stops, cafes, would be nice along the way. Obviously I won't be doing too many a day, <laughs> I won't need to, maybe only one or two, but uh, suggestions are welcome. So another thing I've done is I've, to this bike, I've switched back to two horns, uh, two snail horns, the louder ones. Recently, I had the standard horn on this bike, just using the normal wiring. And then I had one snail horn connected to the um, CAN smart device through the dedicated wiring loom for the horn. But what I found was, um, when you press the horn button, they weren't perfectly in sync and it was really annoying. So what you do is you press the horn and you'd hear the electric horn first, you go beep, and then about half a second later, you hear the hurr of the uh, snail horn. And if you've got two horns, they should come on at the same time. So I've put the uh, snail horns back on and through a little um, wiring adapter through Nippy Normans, they're actually connected to the, the bike loom, not the can smart. And that's fine. This is the third bike where I've connected those two snail horns directly to the, the wiring loom of the bike and I've not blown a fuse once. No complaints on any of the bikes that I've connected them to, so perfectly happy with that. If anyone else is going to Silverstone on the um, on the Sunday, when I get there, if I remember, I'll do a little community post to say that I'm there. All I'll be doing Oh, I've just got done with that mission by the way, so I'm not going to be in a grandstand. My intention is probably to walk the perimeter of the track two or three times, mainly watching the bikes go around and uh, taking photos from various vantage points. So hopefully I'll see you there, and if I don't see you there, hopefully you'll see me in another video. But if this, this is your first visit here, I very much appreciate it if you take a little look around my channel see my bike reviews and the vlogs and uh, other capers that I get up to. Mind you, this little trip north I got planned will certainly be not like my usual rides, so I am looking forward to that. Definitely be outside of my comfort zone. So stick around and see how I get on on my first multi-day trip on a motorbike in the UK. So until the next time folks, take care of yourselves. ta -da. Oh, you stopped. Oh, you son of a No! No! Well, I'm nearly home, but just a little camera update. <laughs> uh, basically, the Ultima add-ons adapter seemed to be quite happily powering both cameras. And they seem to uh, have recorded pretty much all of the ride until I stalled at a roundabout. Then I looked back and realised that my camera had stopped. But I've just discovered, after I filled up the fuel, is that uh, if I had that camera recording um, with the ignition on, and then start the bike, you know, just press the run button, that camera doesn't like it, it immediately switches off. And I mean terminate with extreme prejudice. <laughs> that Hero 6 is powered from the same plug as the Insta. Um, but that doesn't restart. That, as far as I know, has not stopped recording, and neither has the uh, GoPro Hero. <laughs> so, for some reason, the uh, 360 camera on the back doesn't like the bike being started. I bet you're glad you know that now. <laughs> Ta-da!